I've been working on a story the last few days, and I sort of promised myself I wasn't going to do a lot. I was going to do the match fixing thing, which is huge. And it's got so many words. I even had to, look. I've even got my um, special typewriter up here. Like this is a USB electronic keyboard in the style of an old typewriter. Because I'm such a boomer, I grew up on typewriters, and I feel better when I type with a typewriter. So I swapped this keyboard out and put that in my steampunk shit, so I can. Right, so I can really get into it, you know? I, I, I've been working on that, like, fucking... Every, all my downtime is on that now, pretty much. So I don't... I haven't even... People are like, oh, you should play some games. Uh, you, should, you should stream more Football Manager. It's like, if I'm doing that, I ain't doing the other thing. And technically, the other thing is important. It's And, and the further I get away from it, and the more jaded I get with the industry, the less likely it is to finish. So I've got to try and commit, you know, and try and tunnel in. But anyway, so I've been working a, a load on that. And another story I was working on at the moment was shit that's going on behind the scenes at Overwatch because I'm still massively juiced in. I still know everything that's going on at Activision Blizzard. I mean, it was, it was, it's been a rough week, <laughs> honestly. I, I'm, I, I'm not saying I'm losing it, but I definitely, when I saw the Activision Blizzard sale been announced, I really got pissed off because the source had sort of said big things in the works, Richard. And, you know, do you want to you want to talk some time? And I just thought, no, <laughs> no, I don't actually. I I can't be asked. So I could have probably had that, but the problem is I just don't care. <laughs> I just fundamentally don't care anymore. Like nothing to prove. The industry sucks. Uh, fuck it. Who cares? Yeah, Richard, but that would have been the story of the year. You would have been on course for another award. Yeah, got a Lifetime Achievement Award now. I mean, any award you stack on top of Lifetime Achievement, waste of time. <laughs> so, fuck it. Absolutely fuck it. It's like completing the game. It's like New Game Plus. Well, what's so good about the... Oh, it's the same game, just a little bit harder. Ah, you're all right. You're all right. I'll just play another game. <laughs> That's just being honest about it, you know. So anyway, I probably could have had that, but whatever. But then... I've been working on another story, Overwatch. Man, so some of the stuff, I, I I mean, I'll drop some crumbs here. Basically, at the moment, it is a fucking, it's a mess. It's a mess. It looks like the season, they're aiming for it to start. I've got the exact date I think they're aiming for, but it's going to be in April. And remember, they're doing it on Overwatch 2, right? <laughs> Uh, they're doing it on Overwatch 2, and um, but it's it's going to be the beta for Overwatch 2. So they are having their super cool competitive league, their premium eSport. They're doing it on a beta, but interestingly enough, everything is so fucked up at Activision Blizzard now in terms of like what's going on behind the scenes. And uh, they just had that um, Chinese New Year thing, and it's got, like, less skins in it than ever before, you know? Like, there is no con... The fuck Overwatch content. It's all hands on pumps to try and get Overwatch 2. So what they're doing is, this beta version they're going to do the League on, um, it's not the complete game. Because remember, the game, the sequel, like what would have been DLC 10 years ago in the gaming industry, the sequel uh, is going to be PV p crossover so you can play overwatch and overwatch 2 but it's also going to be pve it's going to have loads of pve stuff so you level up your character you do you know all of that right well the pve is nowhere near finished because <laughs> for the esports league to be ready they've got to go and, and totally focus on the pvp and they've got to have a working beta ready by april <laughs> it, it's got to happen there is no <laughs> There's no argument. Like, if it's not there, everything is fucked. So they're gonna not. They're, they're just separating the PvP now, just, just to get it ready. They're gonna play uh, Overwatch Two, the 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 next season of the Overwatch League on a beta of Overwatch Two. So that was the first thing. Then the next thing, and this ties in with news that happened today. And you, oh man, you guys are gonna love this. So you know, I'm an industry guy, right? I think I know about esports. I think I understand how it works, what's going to be successful, what isn't, what the trends are. It's my bread and butter. It's in my blood. For me, my read on this next season of the Overwatch League is it's the Hail Mary pass. 
it is the Hail Mary pass. And why do I say that, right? Well, because, first of all, it's the new game that's meant to completely rejuvenate. Everyone's been huffing hopium that Overwatch 2 is going to take Overwatch from a tier... I'm being generous. Tier 2 eSport, back to being the Tier 1 eSport, which it was briefly for like a week in 2016. And um, it's going to uh, capture the imaginations of the crowds around the world, particularly in the Chinese market. And they're going to be able to parlay it into a successful esports league and rejuvenate the intellectual property, you know, completely. That's what they believe. That's what they want. All the people, by the way, and owners, team owners and the franchises are totally split on this behind the scenes. Someone to sell, got a problem there, Activision Blizzard have to approve sales. <laughs> he should have read the fine print and also... I've paid 20 million for an asset that's now approximately, in my opinion, worth about two. So 50% want out, but don't understand what that would look like. And the other 50% are like, no, 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 no. Give me that fucking <sighs> full Dennis Hopper in blue velvet. <laughs> Hope, hopium out of their mind, you know, like, no, it'll work. The game's going to be amazing. So they're going to play the league on a beta that's going to be rushed out to meet a date that seems to be immutable for reasons I don't understand, mostly because of the way they structure it with the, the when the org sign the contracts. But then here's the other thing. You want the best broadcast in esports, right? Like, I, I'm going to say this. The Overwatch League broadcast is good. You know, it's really good until it gets to the game. <laughs> and then it's all downhill from there. It's a really good broadcast in terms of its polish. And it is held upright... Not by the content, but just by the sheer charm and charisma and intelligence and craft of the talent that they've employed. The, the real tragedy about the Overwatch League as a project is it's had some of the best talent in esports working on one of the lamest products under the most constraints and in often times for not really a lot of money. So get this, you need this season to succeed you need it like you know you've you've smashed open the piggy bank the rent is due you're at the dog track <laughs> you need it like that y you feel me not even your piggy bank because adults don't have them your kids piggy bank you've smashed that you've took all the coppers has been saving up there's even a note in it i will buy dad a nice christmas present and you're smashing it open in June and taking the last two pound out in ten pences and twenties. And you're off down a dog track and you put it all on Santa's little helper. Right? That's where we're at with the fucking Overwatch League, yeah? You need this to succeed. So what are Activision Blizzard doing? Oh. Oh, you won't even believe it. In their negotiations with talent, one of the things they keep pushing is... And this is nicely game exclusivity because you'll notice some of the talent chop and change, don't they? Some of the talent go work Valorant events. So process that initially. Yours is a league that's been failing and swirling down the fucking pan. And you're pushing this idea of game exclusivity because you don't want the people that are keeping your fucking league up, right? To ha have any options or go and make another rival product. Overwatch doesn't compete with Valorant. In what world is that true? But anyway, they don't want them making a rival product better. So they're demanding game exclusivity. Now, here's the thing. You pay for that, right? You pay top dollar for that. Anyone who knows anything about economics knows this. If you have a product of value, something that people want and by definition because only you or a handful of others can produce content either of that type or caliber the scarcity drives the cost example there's only one richard lewis you can do that as a chant now on twitch features there is only one richard lewis and so all them if i have Loads of people who want to hear what Richard Lewis has got to say, what, what he thinks, want to watch him manage Ugandan football teams into the ground. If you want to profit from that, you've got to pay me to get that. And that's how I make my paper, right? And that's literally what I do. I'm an editor at large over at DeSerto because Richard Lewis, that name still sort of resonates and has some sort of value in esports. People want my opinions. People want my, you know, want my take on things. 
They want my investigative reporting because of my record and my achievements. And again, this sounds like I'm just fellating myself. Trust me, my beer gut gets in the way. Um, you know, I add credibility to, to, to where I go because of my tenure, if nothing else. Right? So, you pay for that. Activision Blizzard, though, they don't want to pay for that. Can you believe they have essentially been going to talent and saying you must be exclusive to us in a league that could tank and fail and also is pretty much the same as what you were on last time mm. guess what happened <laughs> right i mean you know guess guess what happened obviously people fucking peace the fuck out and we've just seen the first of it announced today now i'm a, this is what i mean about it being a bad week i'm literally typing this up tonight and getting ready to file it with my editors and now once again old slow man richie lou has been beaten uh beaten to it uh because here we are look you can see this is sideshow gaming uh josh wilkinson very talented individual and you can see here Bren and I, that's obviously his uh, commentary partner, another fantastically talented uh, individual. Uh, Bren and I currently do not have an agreement for 2022 with the Overwatch League, marking the end of our four years as broadcast talent. This is unbelievably significant. I mean, you know, look, whatever you take, if you're an Overwatch fan, what, whatever you take on the Monte Cristo and Semler era, maybe you thought those guys were just there for a paycheck. Maybe you thought those guys weren't that good. Maybe you recognize them as absolute, you know, legends that would enhance any broadcast they're a part of. Overwatch is uh, divided on that. No one is divided on this. No one is divided on this. There is no division on this. Sideshow and Bren are like the fucking originals of the fucking league. And there is a theory, and I, I just legit say shit because I tell the truth. There is a theory, by the way, that removing some of the bigger names and giving these guys more space you know actually was a good thing for the league some people think that these guys are not re-signing i ain't talk to these dudes who fucking knows right but it's because of this shit that they're doing behind the fucking scenes they just treat their fucking talent like fucking garbage they make too many demands do you know what happens now by the way because of these fucking outrageous demands you're putting on people i guarantee that these guys are going to go to valorant they're going to get opportunities in valorant they're going to crush it in valorant and now what they're already doing valorant they're already well liked in valorant they've already got connects in valorant so congrats well done you've done it again blizzard you've done it again and all you had to do was recognize that as a tier 2 esport which is what you are you don't get to make those type of demands if you want to keep the best people it don't work like that it, it, this is straight economics why do i have to explain it look at the state of me Drinking a beer on stream, red-faced moron in a scruffy Misfits t-shirt, and I could take you all to school on the fucking basics of economics. And yet, you're a company that's just sold for 67 fucking billion dollars. What's wrong with this picture? Unbelievable, man. And it doesn't end there, by the way. Just before I segue into the next part of this. Riot Games. <laughs> the man. They love shit like this because what you what you have to realize is Valorant isn't even necessarily generating its own W's. As again, I'm going to keep using Zoomer talk. I realize my audience has got younger as I've scaled upwards, but shout out to the boomers. W's a win, yeah. It's the first letter in win, so W for win. That's what they say. So they say the W. Sometimes even the dub, just the dub, D U B. Um, anyway. Valorant doesn't even generate its own W's right now. It doesn't have to. It's generated a few, sure. They made some good decisions, had some good products, made some good hiring processes. What they do is they just wait for their rivals to absolutely fuck up and give them a, have a free W. Like, they just uh, they wake up in the morning, open the door, just W's all up in their grill. Think about it. Like, CS go with the coaches... The way they're patching the game and all of that shit. Overwatch League just driving talent in their arms while they tank their fucking league. Call of Duty, by the way. 
they just uh, had their opening weekend, and it was like the lowest it's been in ages. Peaked at 80,000. Average viewership, 50,000. If you go back to the one prior to that, that was 120,000. It's like no one wants to win the Cold War of the, of the developers anymore. They just... Eh. It's like I said. Activision Blizzard could fuck up a wet dream. How are you going to let talent this good slip through your fucking fingers over mere trivialities? Because, by the way, I'll also let you in on a little industry secret, and this is for all games developers. If you treat your people right, and you listen to them, and you give them input into the final product, do you know what happens? They take pride in it. They can steer it in the direction it wants to go. They feel empowered. They feel part of a team. They feel secure. You get the best out of them. You see them come to life. You see them take risks. You get a better product. I know. I did it at E-League. When you don't do that and you say, listen, we're going to have to contractually demand that you commit, you wouldn't have to if you gave them the cool shit they want. They would take more pride in an Overwatch broadcast if you looked after them and gave them that leeway than they would in a Valorant broadcast where they don't get that leeway. But you won't do that because you're a game developer and by extension a fucking narcissistic moron. A collection of them, a gaggle of them. The incredible thing is, by the way, if you want somebody to take a pay cut, do you know what, the, you, know what you give them in place of the money? The control, the influence, the security, the trust. It's this, none of this is rocket science. You ever wondered, by the way, <clears throat> why E-League was such a good broadcast? It's because we used to sit down and do these meetings and we would say at the start of the meeting what we want, what graphics we want made, where we want to go with something. We would be told, you know, feel free. Like, you want to go up to the line? Go up to the line. That was an American company at a time when everything was getting sanitized and wokeified, and they put foreign on TV for fuck's sake. There was no, there was no contracts there saying. Ah, ah, ah. And think of the moments we created. Just think of them. Think of foreign beefing with Shaq, Charles Barkley saying, <laughs> you know, it's weird to see black people with uh, British accents. Like, what the fuck you want about Joe? <laughs> That's the that's the most mind blowing thing about that segment for me. Like, what are you talking about, Charles? Like, he literally said that. He literally said that on Inside the NBA. And no one gave a fuck. More making fucking Kusta tear up. Moses getting in his wheelchair. I, I'm missing out loads of stuff. When we got roasted by the FGC for showing the security guard on camera, and they said it was like <laughs> fucking. This is a tacit endorsement of the police in America and police brutality. Oh, shut the fuck up. It's a fucking joke. You fucking losers. Get a bath. We created some fucking absolutely epic moments, and that's outside of the majors. And we did it based on we looked after the people and we gave the people the room, and it didn't always work, and it didn't definitely didn't always go over popular. And there was definitely some times we had calls from standards and practices about things we said and things we did. Shit, I got absolutely lit the fuck up, right? Because his I don't even know if I've ever told this story. Uh, so right to me, <laughs> a normal human being, okay. A skinhead is just someone that has their head shaved, right? You have a skinhead. You, you go and you get a skinhead. Your head is skin, right? And so I, I'll say someone's typed skinhead story. So I guess I have told this one, but whatever. I'll tell it again. The, the oldies are the goodies, right? So <laughs> when I had to do a throw to Henry G and Sadakist in season two, Basically, it was uh, uh, Henry had just shaved his head for some fucking reason. I don't even know. He has a lovely head of hair. I don't know why he did it. But anyway, he shaved his head. And so I said, I'm throwing over to Sadakist and Skinhead G. <laughs> right? And everything's fine. They take the catch, you know? Henry's like, yeah, I'm just getting a bit smooth out here and all of this. Right? And I walk off stage. I'm, you know, got my mic on. I'm still there. I get pulled. I get pulled by the execs. Why have you referred to Henry G as a skinhead? What do you mean? He's got a skinhead. And, and they were like, no, a skinhead is a neo-Nazi. I'm going, you what? <laughs> you fucking what? You've just referred to your commentator as a fucking neo-Nazi on a broadcast. I'm like, you definitely didn't. Like, that's not, 
That's not the joke. It's just he shaved his fucking head. <laughs> That's all. I had to fucking explain to a bunch of suits that in Britain, it's just not got that connotation. It was fucking crazy. But, you know, no one got fired. No one got cancelled. What a time to be alive. Shit, it was 2016. Different world. The long and the short of it is, if you put trust and faith in your talent and you invest in them, they'll want to do a good job for the broadcast. Not just from a point of personal pride and not just for financial incentives, but because it matters to them and you feel like you're a fucking real team and a real family, you know? And, it, like, that word's overplayed and you should never buy into someone calling you a family in corporate America or any fucking business for that matter, but... You know, at E-League, it kind of was like that. Bunch of just normal dudes have been grinding away in esports, getting put on American TV, mixing up with fucking celebrities and everything. Super tight with everyone on all the levels. Shit, man. I even went out to a fucking... I got took to some absolutely fucking gangster-lit nightclub by the floor managers. <laughs> I, I used to hang out with all the crew, you know? Like, they used to... They took me all... And Atlanta's got more strip clubs. Like per person than anywhere else in the world i think so you know it was like a family thing man like i could have made more money elsewhere i probably could have made more money going freelance i never did i never wanted to i didn't want to go and make somebody else's product better i wanted me and my people to be good i wanted us to be the best i wanted us to get all the shine together because we come up together you know it's just a basic psychological thing so the Overwatch League has just lost two of its biggest names in the broadcast. Irreplaceable, by the way. Irreplaceable, and now they're going to go kill it in another game. But let me show you another thing. Overwatch League took another L today. So, this is not Gandalf. Um, <laughs> everyone's turning into Gandalf. I'm just jealous because he's still got his hair. This is not Gandalf. This is DJ Wheat. Now, for those who don't know, DJ Wheat is an industry legend i don't throw that term around lightly occasionally i accidentally attribute it but you know i don't throw it around lightly and i know he's had beef and said some dumb shit with people that i like and genuinely care about but your body of work is your body of work and personally again just to let you know about like i i i fuck with people based on how they, they've treated me and um, obviously don't want to belabor the point, but when I was going through a rough time, a real rough time two years ago, DJ Wheat was one of those people that I never expected to contact me, and he did. I got a, I got a call from this man asking if I was okay, and it weren't just one call neither. He called me back and called me back, and we hung out and we talked a lot. So he's a good guy in my book, and I don't care about esports beef or bullshit. That transcends that. That's about who you are as a person, who you are as a man. And he's got no reason to ever fucking think about me in those kind of terms. But we go back, we work together, we know each other. So he he's a good guy. So he's got my everlasting respect because the people, I found out who my friends were at that time. And I was let down by a lot of people. Uh, in the industry and pleasantly surprised by <laughs> lots of others you don't realize just as a bit of life advice as a boomer that's lived a little bit you don't know whose lives you've touched and improved and who genuinely thinks about you warmly until you're in a crisis so anyway not gandalf dj wheat and a super cool dude if you you know understand anything about the nature of esports he's one of the original iconoclasts but unfortunately he will also always be remembered and i, I don't think you're this way brother when you watch this uh he'll also be remembered as one of the original sellouts because he was one of the guys that ascended, you know, but he, he used to be a renegade, he used to be on the periphery, and then he did some sponsorship with evil geniuses, but shit, man, he still lit, lit them up a couple of times, but he also did do that State of the Game podcast, which is basically just EG propaganda, but whatever, you know, it was, back then, if you could get a paycheck to make a podcast, you were a fucking genius. And then anyway, he scaled it up and he went, he went to Amazon, you know, well, not, it wasn't Amazon then, sorry, it was Twitch, before it was Amazon. He got paid a ton of money, he became a Twitch executive, and you barely heard from him anymore, and we lost one of the essential voices, but that's a tale in esports that's been replicated a bunch of times, you know, it's not just DJ Wheat, Carmack, Carmack used to be the original iconoclast, he was a journalist, he used to write stuff that was very unflattering about other people in the space, he took an executive job, now he handles the Intel account at, uh, 
you know, ESL made IEM and you and he's not the he cannot publicly be the same dude. Maybe he's just not the same dude. Maybe he grew up, you know, people do change. DJ Wheat's still a fiery ass motherfucker, but he's just had the golden handcuffs on for all this time. Now, recently, he's uh, parted ways uh, from Twitch, and that's like a big deal, man, because, you know, he's been there a long time. And also, behind the scenes, if you talk to anybody who worked with DJ Wee or any of the content creators that worked with DJ Wee, he did do a lot of cool shit. He did help a lot of people out. He did some really cool initiatives. Wheat was one of the guys. Marcus was one of the guys. He was, like, pushing the co-streaming revolution. He's still a very smart, savvy dude, and you can still see the, the roadmap to the future. Like, he's... Like, no joke. He was one of the guys that got the Game Awards, I think it was, the first time they did it, to agree to allow content creators to co-stream their content. That was his initiative. So this is a smart dude, you know? Enough sucking DJ Wheat's dick. He, uh is now off the fucking chain again he's able to talk openly without interfering with corporate fucking interests and he uh he t got asked on a recent stream because this guy's still streaming this will be me in a few years like just streaming to a hardcore audience not doing it for the money not just just to stay sane essentially and uh, he got asked about the overwatch league and that 90 million dollar deal oh man uh, by the way, just a shout out to whoever this was in chat. Richard Lewis was spot on as well. He got so much shit for it as well. Story of my life. I even saw a comment about me on Reddit the other day. And somebody said, why does Richard get Lewis get so much hate when he's right all the time? And someone replied with, when you grow up, you'll realize that being right's not the most important thing. Kind of is in my fucking line of work. Don't you think? You know what I mean? And also, just as a concept, I'll take being right and an asshole over being wrong and, like, a nice guy. Like, obviously, like, what, I go through life wrong? And everyone goes, oh, he's a super cool dude, but uh, everything he says is wrong. Everything he does is wrong. Like, it, what? That's some childish shit. Being right is the only thing, you fucking mad cunts. Wait till you hear this. Oh, Lord. I was, I was love. I, it's like, oh, it was just a breath of fresh air. Because obviously I knew internally Wheat was one of the guys pushing back on the fucking unbelievable spending at esports money. And you have to understand, by the way, this is all connected. This is even connected to Saud the Saudi deal with ESL and Face It. That $90 million deal that Twitch signed for the Overwatch League, that, that was like a green light to really stupid fucking money, even if you had a mediocre, unproven esports project. Everyone was like, well, if Amazon value the market to $90 million for two years, no, 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 it was one moron. It, well, it was, it was one moron pushing it. And a bunch of other morons, either too scared to disagree or too stupid to realize they were getting fucking duped. So, right, so anyway, enough enough of my interpretation of a clip you're about to see for yourself, and it's only 60 seconds, and I'm just overselling it. Just padding this out so I get another, like, 50-minute YouTube video out of it. You know, I'll be in the thumbnail doing that, like, every YouTuber, you know. I'm in the thumbnail doing, like, a, it's a picture of, like, the Overwatch League, like, on fire, and it's, like, me going, like, fucking youtube right okay let's uh let's listen to wait uh i was not able to speak publicly about owl while i worked at twitch for obvious reasons but you better believe that i was the guy in every fucking meeting going this is stupid and you're all stupid and i'm every single person that worked on the team at that time will confirm that they got sick and tired of me fucking talking about how terrible of a fucking deal this was for, for like a year and a half. It, it did not feel good. I'll tell you why it didn't feel good. Because that league cost a lot of fucking money. And a year later, 11 of my fucking staff was laid off. Right? So I was especially especially fucking angry that we did this of course i was not good to hear him shout again you remember that remember that kids remember when the uncle dj wheat used to fucking shout and go off you remember that oh man i'm, I'm really I, i'll have to get him i did an interview with him 
shit might have been for a rivalry a while back i can't really remember i've just got to get him on the podcast i reckon now that he's free because we can really get into it and as i said we still got a good uh we still got a good rapport you know but anyway finally someone at twitch well formerly of twitch has acknowledged what we all fucking know and done so publicly and that is that that 90 million dollar deal was fucking bogus it was a crock of shit it should never have happened whoever co-signed it he actually goes on to say because i watched this entire stream uh because i got told to he actually goes on to say that you know in his opinion the people that signed off on that deal because it led to like layoffs and cutbacks also cutbacks on spending for uh for esports content in general he said those motherfuckers should have got fired spoiler without naming names you know what i know some motherfuckers got told like you, we're telling you now your contract ain't gonna be re-upped so it's okay you got our blessing start looking you ain't coming back to this company go somewhere else go fuck up a startup please so it's actually crazy it's actually fucking crazy that you know here we are 2022 remember overwatch league started it was 2016 when all the shit was conceived <clears throat> and there was people like me getting asked you know at e-league i'm there in a shirt i even think i'm popping buttons because I, I was eating fried chicken for breakfast don't recommend it there's a video of me like richard lewis on the overwatch actually let's see can we can we can we find this yeah here it is i mean now this is content let's just have a listen to this interview which by the way let's see how right i am because I have not watched this interview ever, actually. <laughs> I just I just did it. And I, by the way, did this when I was at E-League, very early doors. And this was ridiculous. Uh, I got shit over this too. Because they said, Richard, your comments about Overwatch, not great. Because I think this is when they were pitching to do the Overwatch Cup. And we did do it. And you'll, you'll notice I wasn't there. <laughs> I, I, had, I got told, hey, Richard, uh... Wouldn't it be cool if you had a paid holiday? I went, what? No, I really want to do the Overwatch League. I'm looking forward to doing the show. Right, let's go. Lord. Okay, well, let's do it then. Uh, let's be absolutely clear about why the Overwatch League exists, okay? Blizzard have made a significant and amazing contribution to esports. No doubt about it. I think I've been overly diplomatic there, but okay. Accidentally, you see. That's the problem. They did it accidentally. I remember interviewing Blizzard employees where they've explicitly said, and this is as late as like, I think 2012, they've explicitly said, we do not care about esports. If we make a great game first and it happens to be a successful esport, great, but we do not care. But then esports took off and it made crazy amounts of money. So first they tried to fix StarCraft 2, which should have been... They, again, they had all the tools at their disposal. Should have been amazing, right? They should have done WCS format when it first came out. They didn't have the vision, so they didn't do it. They tried to throw money at the problem and region locking and all this. And everyone was like, you know what? I'm bored now. Sorry. We had a major event every weekend with the same casters every weekend, you know, and money just flying everywhere. And now people are bored of it. You, you, you're lost. Then I remember, because Blizzard used to like me, uh, and I remember talking to Blizzard employees and they said, we're going to lock it down for Heroes of the Storm. I'm like, guys, okay, a few things. You're coming late to the MOBA party, just in case you don't know. Uh, and then second of all, like, you want to do a WCS format, which has just failed in one game, and you want to do it in a MOBA that isn't even a proper MOBA. And why do I say that? Because it was, uh, it's designed in a way where you really can't carry and not to the same degree you can in dota or league of legends it's kind of more team focused and they deliberately made that design choice let me tell you about esports fans i know a thing or two about them they like to follow the best players they don't care at all. oh we're all the same on a team that's boring you don't want five clones who all play at the same ability you want a god who just come you want a dandy you know like you want somebody like this you know a faker right somebody who's just on a team and is just outrageous you know at that moment in time the player that wins you games you don't really have those names in heroes of the storm and because of that design choice i think it was hampered the fact it came late so they threw a bunch of money at that can, can we be honest about it it failed as an esport hey they even didn't put fundamental things in the game like you had to use a separate website to show the drafting system at home Hearthstone, accidental success again. Not an eSport, not eSports ready in any way, shape or form. Took off because it's a popular game that borrows from a popular IP in the form of World of Warcraft. 
Does it have a spectator client? Yeah, I don't think it does. How can you not make the... <laughs> you had a replay system in StarCraft. You've actually actively gone backwards. So, okay. Blizzard have had a checkered history with esports. But then when they saw it take off, they were like, wow, everyone's getting paid now. Christ, we kind of built this by accident. So we should get something out of it. And I know this because they one of the reasons they liked uh, the idea of the Activision Blizzard buying MLG was because it had a TV platform. Because they, I think when they saw Twitch go to Amazon for $970 million, they were like, our games help that. Do we get any? And Twitch are like, no, nah, of course not. This is our thing. So they wanted a TV solution. I've even had talks with By the way, all, that was all true. I'm very glad for Blizzard they avoided that train wreck. That's an absolute dumpster fire. But, um, you know, they, they, they wanted MLG TV as a TV solution for Call of Duty and for whatever games they wanted to put out. They're not going to use it like that, I don't think. I think we're too far down the beaten path now. But then they really started flexing. And this is where Overwatch comes in. They've designed a game to have this populist appeal. I have no problem with that whatsoever. It's fine. But they've ignored some fundamental rules about esports. Class-based shooters do not do well as an esport. It's too much information. You have all the complexities of a MOBA with loads of different things happening and different visual abilities. First-person shooters must be simple to watch. You know, gun, crosshair, bullets, that's it. I need to know what the gun does by looking at the gun. I can't have like 50 different things shooting out the end of a gun and have to like follow the color of the bullets to know whether it's going to stun them or kill them. Or, what is this nonsense? The average fan can't grasp that. So it, it's a huge challenge. That's why it's never worked. So first of all, your game choice is outrageously stupid. Second <laughs> of all, has there ever been an eSport succeed that was forced? as an eSport. But anyone? No? no yeah, yeah, no takers, because there hasn't been one. You can't force it. You have to organically build up a community. You have to make a really good game that people are engaged with and want to dedicate hours to. And the player base that I'm talking to from Overwatch, I'm talking to XTF2 players, we're like, I'm here to make money. That's the pros, by the way. And the average casual player is just like, wow, the balance is all out of whack. You just killed this, kill it. You're changing things. The patches are coming too fast. None of us can keep up. Blizzard Back when they used to actually patch their the game. game. People are bored. They're not having fun. Hours are going down. It is very much a casual experience. And again, I'm sorry, you cannot synthesize an eSport from that. So Blizzard have a lot to do just to get the game in shape. So, all of that said, <laughs> here's what we do. We, we are going to use the success of League of Legends. We're going to use the success of Dota's International, particularly, but and everything Valve have done in CSGO. And we are going to create a document, which I've read, uh, the Morgan Stanley document. This is legendary. If you can get your hands on it, you will... It, oh, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. They're comparing esports like the WWE and stuff like this. You know, it's like, you know, how long has that been around for? Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and, and they've literally duped venture capital uh, companies who've got money to spend. You know, Always you know love the word duped as well. Work, right? It's like they're placing a series of bets at a series of tables. They don't care because one of them will win. If you lose 60 mil, but your one investment comes in and makes you 100 mil, it's all fair game. You've got the money to play with. Uh, and, and they've duped a bunch of people into sort of investing in it. I would not advise, I would not have advised it. I don't think it's a wise investment. I think dropping 20 million to have a slot in a league with no proof of concept when you've got 20,000 people watching the premier tournament that's being played right now. And you know, this is madness. And I've seen these bubbles before. They are dangerous because when people buy into stuff, and it, if it collapses, all of that money disappears, all of those jobs disappear, all of that investment disappears, and you won't see any of those people affected for a few years. So this is why I'm not resistant to it. I've said I actually want it to succeed just because of Change what my mind on that. will be if it doesn't. But everything about this is wrong. It's too expensive. The game isn't attracting a hardcore audience. Uh, the... Um, money is too much for startups. Again, I saw Hastra. I mean, he's out of his mind these days. He <laughs> said uh, on Twitter, he's like going... Oh, Call that too! Show me the viewing figures for the first year of League of Legends. Okay, I will. I didn't have to pay 20 million to get in that league. I just bought... You know, I just got a team. And just paid them a low-level salary in Season 1. That was all I had to do. Minimum investment. Hmm, it leads to growth. All oh, right, okay. So this is insane. It's absolute insanity what's going on at the Overwatch League. And it's dangerous. 
I don't want massive venture capital firms, their first experience, getting burned for 20 mil. They're never coming back to this. So Blizzard have a huge responsibility on their shoulders, and I wish they could see a little bit further than just we want to get ours. I think that's really negative uh, for one of the major players in the esports industry. So, you know, am I on board with it? Absolutely not. Blizzard will certainly not involve me in any capacity with it at this point. Um, you know, they, they, I've already heard from people that they, they certainly think my attitude is unacceptable. Uh, but um, I care about esports. I don't care about Blizzard. You know, I care about the bigger picture. And I think, as it stands, the Overwatch League has the potential to be incredibly harmful and burn a bunch of people. Well, <laughs> and here we are in 2022. Who knew? Oh yeah, I did. He's done it again. He's done it again, Richard fucking Lewis, mate. And again, got so much shit for that interview, but was I wrong? You see, the kids who say, listen, being right isn't the most important thing. Oh, it is for me. Oh, yes. Brush my teeth with that shit. Fucking hell. Tough times in the Overwatch League. Read my upcoming report on Deserto. 